Hello, my name is Lana. Today I'm going to do this YouTube video to talk to you about how silicon, silicone reacts once it's implanted inside the body with the immune system. This is my dog Emo and my lovely assistant Brianna. Okay, Brianna, could you hold up the board please? Okay. This is basically the outline of your immune system, the way the lymph sites run through the body. Um, they're your knees, your groin area, your intestinal tract, the armpit area is up through the chest, back of the throat, neck, through your arms. What happens when you put silicone into the body through a silicone implanted medical device? You can either do it through a silicone implant, say in a um, calf, uh, IUD, silicone morena IUD, uh, noroplant, breast implants. Pacemakers are made of titanium, but they have silicone um, tubing that goes down into the heart. They actually make silicone lip implants, silicone chin implants, cheek implants, lots of different things used in the medical field today that are implanted into the body that contain silicone. The immune system is created with all these different different cells. The B cell sees the silicone and tags it. The T cell comes in. Once the T cell comes in, it begins to launch an attack against the implant because it considers it a foreign body inside the body. That, so that the C cells, the microphage cells, the killer K cells come in, go ahead Brianna, and begin to um, place antibodies around the implants. Tagging the implants, first the B cell tags it, the T cell comes in with the C and the macrophage and the K cells and creates the antibody response around the implants. The antibody response continues until it's completely encased the implant with the scar tissue, a capsule if you will, to protect the body from the implant. Then from that day forward, the memory cell always and forever will remember the silicon when it comes into the body and it will again in return respond in the same response. The, T, the B cell will see it, the T cell will come after it, or the memory cell sets off the secondary response. And then the other cells come into play to begin to work to try to grab a hold of that uh, new, new incoming silicon and destroy it. But what's happening is because they are placing silicon, silicate, silicone, simethicone in all of the medications and all of the foods, when a person, after a person has an implant and it's been encased and walled off by the immune system, the immune system should be able to rest T cell stops producing the lymph sites in order to try to get the silicone and it, everything calms back down. But because they're putting the silicon, silicate silicone in the medications and in the foods, when they do that, it sets off a secondary response. Say if the silicon comes in through medication or through foods, like your fast foods, you know, the majority of the fast foods on the market today contains 2% silicon, silicate silicone, dimethylpolysiloxalane. And nearly, I'd say the major majority of all medications also contain silica, silicon, silicate, silicone of some form. But when it comes into the body, through either the foods, so the first thing that happens when you begin to eat it, it begins to light up the gastrointestinal tract, the immune system there. When you continue to ingest it, or when you ingest it through medications, it begins to light up more and more of the lymph sites spread throughout the body in an inflammatory response. It starts with inflammation in the gastrointestinal tract and moves into inflammation of the muscles and joints, going on into inflammations of the lungs, inflammation of the bladder, and it spreads as an inflammatory reaction all throughout the body, creating like type syndromes. Say, for example, muscle and joint swelling, it's the arthritic type syndromes. Gastrointestinal tract swelling, they consider irritable bowel syndrome, um, upper GI tract problems. With breathing difficulties, they begin diagnosing them as asthma. And what it really is, it's an inflammation of the immune system, of the lymph sites that spread all throughout our body. Okay, so this is what happens when the immune system sees silicone the second time, through either medications or through foods. And like I said, if you become symptomatic enough, enough of your immune system is inflamed from introducing the medications and the foods, pretty soon you become sensitive to natural forms of silica and silicon as well. Okay, Brianna? Put this aside. Can you um, show me some of those studies? Well, first I want to mention 
right here on the bottom of this is a, my, my website, the link to my website, siliconehypersensitivity.com. It's on Google. On, on my website, I've made available several research studies. First of all, what you're going to see is a silicone hypersensitivity test result that was done on myself through Dr. Shanklin and Smalley, and it showed that there is a marked T cell stimulation when, it, when my body sees silicon, silicone, or silicate through medications or food. I'm not alone in this. During when this test was done, my two sons were also tested. They tested positive. Our doctor tested 25 other children who all tested positive. All of those children were born to women of implants. So what happened in my case, case of my sons is when my body created the lymph site to fight against the silicone, that lymph site was passed in utero to my children. So their immune system now has a T-cell lymph site that is stimulated when silicone goes into their body through medications and foods as well. These are the, um, the blood rods that were done after I was put in the hospital last year having an anaphylaxic reaction to a silicon in the nebulizer treatment that I had been given. After three days of being in the hospital, I was given silicon for three solid days through several different types of medications. And during that time, this is what happened to my blood work. Before I knew it, they were in, a, in my room giving me shots of insulin and telling me that my liver and my kidneys were failing. I was rapidly growing sicker and sicker by the day. Once the, do once the doctors figured out that they had accidentally been giving me silicon and silicone in all my medications, they stopped it. I was sent home with a very large prescription for um, prednisone and several other different medications to try to fight the allergic reaction response I was having. All of these forms are available on my website. All these documentations for you to go in and review at your leisure. You can read them closer. Anyway, so we have here discharge summary. Oh, the discharge summary from the hospital that actually shows the silicon allergy, the silicon hypersensitivity, in case you're still not believing me. And I'm going to let my assistant tell you about some of the different studies. Okay, these three studies that she's handing me now are studies that have been done on the secondary effect of silicon, silicone breast implants on, on the unborn children. So children born to women of implants are having medical problems. Not all of them, but there is a large number of them that are, as I mentioned before, 25 children tested positive from our rheumatologist's office. So there is a reason to be doing studies to find out how to prevent the kids from getting sick and having um, symptoms from their mothers having implants. On my website, I have there's a copy of my story that tells you what happened to me, what happened to my children, exactly what our medical conditions were, what our symptoms were, and how I treated it, and how we I was able to get the kids well, and I was able to get myself well for a period of, of probably about eight years until I accidentally last year got into silicon, like I said, through being put through the hospital and through a medication that was not listed on the ingredients. This is a study done on women with implants showing it stimulates the immune system. I'm going to let my granddaughter, she said to say it for me, and I'll just, hand, I'll just show you a copy of it. This is three pathologists this. from the Department of Pathology and Sunnybrook Health Science Center in Toronto, Ontario, Ontario California. Okay. There's another study done by five pathologists about silicone-induced illnesses. This one is a report done about T-cell reactions to ear implants. To cochlear ear implants, there was an immune system response, a silicone hypersensitivity allergic reaction to a cochlear implant. And there have been several of those reports made over the years, several cases reported, and a lot of those are available on my website as well. This is a study done on food safety. This is one of the outlines of the study done on safety putting silicon in our foods and medications. In this particular one, they say that the silicon in the foods should lay, fall under the exempt category under generally recognized as safe. To the FDA, silicon is generally recognized as safe. So they feel there's really very, very little need to do any research on the putting the silicon dioxide, silicate silicone in any shape, in any form, into our medications, which go directly into all of our bloodstream, and into our foods, which go directly into our digestive tract. This is also available on my website. This is a copy of a menu for one example of KFC. If you see the highlighted yellow, 
The high things that are highlighted in yellow are silicate, silicon dioxide, and dimethylpolysiloxylane. This is a list of their menu ingredients. So as you can see, silicon, silicate, and silicone used in our food is done quite sparsely. And this is like, you'll find this in almost all the websites if you go in and look at their list of menu ingredients. And you'll find the same thing at McDonald's, for example. So they need to take the silicon out of our medications, the silicon, silicate, silicone, dimethicolysilicylane, dimethicone, and cymethicone. They need to take it out of our foods and out of our medications. This is ruining people's health. It's destroying healthcare in this country as we know it. Something needs to be done. FDA, I'm putting you on blast. We have at least 25 doctors here who have done research studies that more than show there is a T-cell immune system response in relation to putting silicone inside the body. Removing the implant in itself will not remove the antibody that the body creates to destroy silicone.